Hey guys, what's happening? Rainy day here in California. Um, Alright, so I wasn't kidding when I say I got a lot of 3D printers. So these are the four that just came in here. Uh, I finally got rid of the CR10 uh, Max. Um, so this is a company that does like organic lighting and um, they brought four of these in. So a couple tabs, a lot of bots. And uh, I'll go through each one of them individually, and because I don't even know what's wrong with them, they didn't even say what's wrong with them. So I think they said, well, well I guess he said one was maybe jammed or something like that. But give me a box of parts, you know, to go with these. So I got a Flash Forge Creator Pro. Then I got this really big one over here, this Ray 3D Core XY. But uh, I'll go into that. So yeah, I do fix a lot of 3D printers. Alright, so this one, look at this huge filament, it has like the typical, like, uh, um, you know, Tazbot or Lesbot, that big gigantic wheel, the plastic wheel. Um, I always thought that, you know, it's, to me, it, thought, it seems like it would wear out and become, like, over time, it would become, you know, you see you have the slack in there. Well, that's going to create issues with retraction, you know, but you now you have to pick up the slack. There's no, probably no backlash. Like on a CNC machine, you have backlash compensation, but. You know, so either I got to print out a new gear, but yeah, they're they're known for those, those big those big gears like that. Um, that was like their trademark was those big gears on their extruder systems. But yeah, the big massive two point eight millimeter um, thing. So this will be the first one I'm gonna fix up here. Um, don't even. This looks like an older printer. I mean, this has to be. Okay, I'm hoping it runs Marlin. It probably runs like an old eight bit version of Marlin. Um, yeah, I mean, look at the size of the extruder. I mean, not the extruder, but the uh, extruder stepper. And it looks like they have a proprietary hot end that's not E3D or it's not, it's not something I'm used to dealing with. So, I mean, it, what's what's funny is I've worked on so many 3D printers. They all look different, but they all function the same way. You know, they have a control board, they have a hot end, they have heated bed, you know, end stops sometimes, you know. They all pretty much follow the same pattern, but they all look different. All right, so I gotta go through each individual one. I gotta fire this up, see what it does. But I was saying it has the thick 2.8 millimeter filament, which I think on a printer this size doesn't make sense. Um, because I, I prefer the smaller filament, the 1.75 filament, because it's moving faster, right? So if you're printing a small a small part, so it, it, you're more likely to heat creep because it has longer time to stay in, in the hot end and melt, right? So I, I prefer faster moving filament than slower moving filament that has time to heat creep. I mean, I, from my experience, it creates more jamming issues. So, all right, what's up with this green stuff? Is that plastic or glass? Jeez. Man, this is horrible. Um, okay, so I'm guessing this doesn't probably have a bed leveling sensor or something. I don't know. I've never... I don't think I've worked on this actual one before. I mean, I've seen it before a long time ago, but... Um, is there even a USB a spot for USB to... Okay, there's an SD card up here. Okay. Wow. I mean, this is... I mean, this probably is probably five or six years old, probably, just by looking at it. So maybe what we'll do is do on the title of these videos, because I have two of the same one. I'll go and I'll figure out what's wrong with these things, and then I'll just uh, say in the title of the video, okay, well this is Lesbot Taz, and then this is, uh, you know, clogged filament or something like that. It could be whatever. But yeah, you can tell this one's different. It has an external power supply. So I'm guessing this is the older one. Um, and they use like these crazy, like, large connectors. Yeah, these weren't cheap printers. The Lesbots were expensive. I mean, they're I think what I see in the store, like fifteen hundred bucks. You know, definitely not the cheap printers. All right. Yeah. So, see what's up with the same Taz. So it's a version five Taz. Obviously, it looks like it's running Marlin. Um, yeah, it's funny. Is there always pretty much firmers on there that hold the menus are totally different the way Crowdy does it, the way all these different companies do it. So it's not going to tell me... I, was I mean, this is probably going to be obviously 8-bit. Um, 
All right, so usually the first thing I do is make sure that's in the way. I do a homing cycle, auto home. Make sure the X, Y is, okay, X works. Obviously we have a Y problem. All right, so that makes me think that there's a problem with the, uh, that's weird. It should have crashed my arm, but instead now the, the Z is going down. All right, let me go check the end stop. End stop is broken. That's what the deal is. All right, so we need uh, so there should be like a metal pin. See this right here? Okay, I just recently had replaced an end stop for a different printer. So I wonder if I actually have one of those. All right, I'm gonna look in their bag of stuff they gave me. They might have an end stop in there, but okay, end stop. Um, All right, I gotta see if I have one of those. All right, so I do actually have end stops. I usually keep a lot of stock. <clears throat> that way I can actually fix them. I don't have to order stuff. Look at that, man. That's some horrible slop. Wow. Okay. Okay, the, 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 the screws are all loose right there. Okay, that's good. Oh, they're loose here, but I have to take the bed off. Okay, so good thing it's not, well, the bearings have slopped too, but that should... Alright, wait, well, I try to, like, go through all these things before I send them back out. Kind of just dial them in a little bit. Okay, so that is... We got a solid issue. Alright. I can't remember the exact name of these bearings, but, um... They're actually not metal bearings, They're, it's more of like a plastic material. And, uh, dude, this thing is thrashed. Let's... Okay. Okay, that goes up here like that. Okay. Hmm. Alright, let me get the Y on there. Okay, so I'll get basic mechanical function done first, then I'll go back through and, and kind of work on tuning. But I just want to make sure everything actually is functional. All right, so this was the end stop. All right. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna do the Z offset in this one yet, but I guess we'll find out. Hopefully it has baby stepping, baby Z. All right. That's interesting, the little tiny little blower fan to take that little thing right there. <laughs> It is cool. I like, got to see all these, how these different printers are working. Different people's ideas and how. I mean, I even have my own because I've designed several intruder systems. So all mine are kind of different too, you know. You know, when, when I first started playing with 3D printers, they didn't really come hot, the hot, heated beds. But this is kind of an odd setup. This doesn't even feel like glass. It feels like more like plexiglass. And there's a... It looks like a silicone heated pad. Um... What is that thing? Are there... Okay, so then here, the wires are coming out there, so I don't know if this was an afterthought. Um, that looks more like a factory set up, the newer version of it. But yeah, I don't know. Plexiglass doesn't seem like a good idea. I mean, you can obviously see they're having issues with sticking with this thing. It feels like plexiglass. It doesn't feel cold like glass. Alright, uh, so I gotta take the bed off to get to the screws. But I should probably make sure this... No, I'm not, I'll fix that first before I test the heated bed. And then I'll, I'm going to take a look at the silicone heated pad. Yeah, see it's just stuck to the bottom via like a adhesive. I mean, this printer is kind of a mess. It's... Um, it's I don't know what... What's going on with these trees? You can see all these screws are just loose. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of how you adjust the, uh, on this old version of it. To adjust the height of the bed, 
Now obviously there's no auto bed leveling sensor, BL touch, capacitive sensor. So you just adjust these 2.5 millimeter uh, M3 screws up and down. That kind of brings the corners up and down. All right, so I'm gonna do a heat test. I'm doing preheat PLA. Make sure the bed gets warm. I blew out the whole thing of my air compressor. Um, function checks, and I'm gonna do a test extrude to see if it actually will extrude out. A couple things I noticed. Um, I guess this is how we did back in the day. But see how the tip of this belt right here rides directly on the bearing right here. These are like 605, 608 bearings. Um, skateboard ball bearings. Um, it just it wears out the face of the, the belt. And I just realized I looked at the spool they gave me. And this is ABS. Uh, probably not the best thing to be printing on uh, when you don't have an enclosed chamber. I'm about to tell them that man. ABS is like, dude, you guys are, it's not going to work right. Um, the, qual the quality of prints are going to be horrible. Um, you don't have a heated chamber. I mean, this is like plexiglass. I mean, I don't know. Uh, okay, temperature. ABS. Alright. I checked because I might want to do a test experiment. I was going to 205 and ABS needs to be hotter. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think they're doing functional stuff, but, you know, I think it's just really just for prototyping. But if you're prototyping, man, ABS is the worst film you're going to want to use. Especially, like I said, if it's not enclosed. Like, the other print of the game is sort of enclosed, but that big, huge uh, rise or race 3D, I don't know what it's called, race 3D. Huh. All right. I don't think I even have any 2.8 millimeter uh, PLA to test it with, but well, okay, I'm going to do an extruder test. Yeah, oh, that's jammed in there. Anyway. Ah, oh, man. All right, so I know the. We went up to 110 degrees for the bed. Um, I'm about to make some suggestions to them to improve this system here. So sometimes what you can do to free these jams up, I mean, this we usually do my first try before I um, I'll take it apart. Is I'll superheat the nozzle. You know, let's say whatever the max is on this one, 290. Yeah, you know, I'm heating this up to 290, and then I'm going to block the actual uh, cooling fan here, right, that cools the fins off to allow heat to creep up enough to where I can soften this film up and maybe I can push it through. Right, this thing's pretty jammed up, so just a couple screws here. Right, I'm keeping it hot, if it's hot so I can pull it out. You can see where it's broken right now. It looks very V6 hot in ish. Um, but yeah, I want to keep it hot so I can push it through. I don't think I grab my gloves or this is 290 degrees. So make sure it's not touching plastic. Alright, grab my wrench and maybe I can push it through. Alright, so it looks like the issue was just a little button of plastic right here. So probably when they were pulling the filament out, you know, it got locked up. It's pretty common. It'll get locked up and it'll like it pull up and it'll solidify. But after that little button that was on the top right there, I was able to, I was able to go in on the uh, heat chamber. So, um, yeah, just a little solidified button of plastic that we were from loading the filament in. All right, so this one, they didn't give me a nozzle, so uh, I don't see a nozzle in there. So I will consider this one a fix. I mean, I'd love to do, I normally do a calibration key bottom. So, fix the end stop, clear the jam, tighten the screws up. Um, yeah, I think I don't want to load the film in there because there's no nozzle in there. So, yeah, they must have that up in the office or something. So, and I don't see a nozzle in the back of parts. So, um, all right, I'm going to move on to the next one. This one I think is uh, should be fixed.